All set. We'll call the meeting of the Capitola Planning Commission to order. Roll call, please. Commissioner Welch. Here. Commissioner Ruth. Here. Commissioner Christensen. Here. Commissioner Wilk. Here. And Chair Newman. Here. Thank you. Okay. Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. This meeting is being cable cast live on Charter Communication Cable TV Channel 8 and AT&T U-verse Channel 99 and is being recorded to be replayed on the following Monday and Friday at 1 p.m. on Charter Channel 71 and Comcast Channel 25. Meetings can also be viewed from the city's website www.cityofcapitola.org. Our technician tonight is Kingston Rivera. As a reminder, please turn off your cell phones during the meeting. If you're going to speak on any of the items today, uh, you'll come up here and sign your name on the sheet at the podium so we have that uh, for the minutes. Okay, next item is oral communications. Uh, any additions or deletions to the agenda? No additional additions okay. or deletions. Okay. Next is a, uh, an opportunity for public communications, which uh, is a time in which people can address the Planning Commission on items that are not on the agenda. And it looks like we may have someone. Yes. Give us your name and then. Yep. Uh, my name is Rafa Sonnenfeld. Um, I'm with Neighborly Santa Cruz. Um, I've been a renter in Capitola, and um, I'm here today to uh, express my uh, displeasure and dismay at the uh, City Council's decision last week to uh, require uh, off-street parking for all ADU types in the coastal zone. Um, and I'm requesting that this commission use your power to uh, push back on that City Council decision. Um, you'll be uh, processing the, uh, uh, the local coastal program that goes along with that decision. and. I think it's really bad uh, planning. Um, I'm arguing that uh, Capistola has decided that preserving their current residential street parking entitlement is more important than increasing the affordable housing options in the coastal zone. Preserving, encouraging, and providing affordable housing is a coastal ac access policy just like parking is, but the city council ignored the housing policy of the Coastal Act, focusing on preserving their existing street parking entitlement program. Capitola could have chosen to mitigate the parking impacts of the new ADUs by simply not permitting street parking for them. This would not have decreased the existing coastal access for visitors or current residents and would have increased the coastal access by creating more residential opportunities. Uh, there's also uh, current limits on the amount of street parking available in the uh, Capitola Village, but they ignored that and continued to uh, require no off-street parking or require off-street parking for any ADU even in the village. Uh, new residential development doesn't need to accommodate parking. In fact, all the new st state laws that Capitola is flouting via the supposed coastal zone loophole speci specifically exempt most ADUs from off-street parking requirements. By preserving uh, their existing street parking entitlement program, even the mitigation the city just approved of requiring an off-street parking spot in the coastal zone would require or would result in a reduction in coastal access for visitors because in neighborhoods other than the village, there is no limit to the number of vehicles the new ADU residents will be allowed to park on the street anyways. A UCLA urban planning professor considered to be the leading voice in parking policy is against off-street parking requirements and against having free parking in general. So once again, I just urge you to push back on the city council and to take a stand, choose people over parking. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wish to address? Okay, next uh, is uh, commission comments, anyone? Seeing none, uh, yeah, we do. Oh, um, yes, I, I Mr. Think, uh, Commissioner Wick. Uh, I'd like to respond to the, the comment that was just brought up. And 
in my opinion, I, um, I try to interpret the will of the city council and, and not to derive their decisions anymore. In fact, we went to them to try to get some guidance on where we should stand on ADUs and whether or not we should be very proactive in terms of uh, housing and, and be, you know, do bend over backwards to try to get as many people uh, in the village uh, as possible. Or are we, do we consider ourselves basically overbuilt and do, and do we want to push back on this? And the general consensus I got from the city council was that we wanted to look for loopholes because we did think that we were overbuilt, particularly in the village. And so there was plenty of opportunities, perhaps in the, uh, like in the, the new um, mall area. There, there are areas where we can uh, ha have a lot of uh, additional um, affordable housing, but perhaps in the coastal zone, it's not something we want to encourage. And so we, we are kind of pushing back and looking for loopholes Again, that was my interpretation of what the city council was going on that. And I don't want to buck them because uh, they're the elected officials and I just try my best to interpret the code. Any other commissioner comments? No. Staff comments? I do, I have, uh, I'm gonna kind of combine the staff comments and the director's report this evening. Um, first, our ADU ordinance uh, went through the first reading with the city council last week. Um, HCD had the opportunity to read the draft and sometimes HCD offers just like the Coastal Commission offers to give preliminary feedback on a draft ordinance and we were fortunate enough to line up a phone call with them today and get their responses and the responses were very minor in um, and so we're working through those so we're going to be doing a second a first reading of our ADU ordinance at the next meeting at the meeting next week to incorporate what the HCD requested in terms of defining vacation rentals specifying that two-story um, ADUs that are beyond the 16 foot limit that's allowed by the state require Planning Commission review so really minor edits just fine-tuning um, so that will go a second uh, the first reading with the HCD comments will go next week uh, to the City Council I also wanted to update you that Mattress Firm has come into compliance with the sign code after a few fines that were established and many conversations. 401 Capitola Avenue across the street, we've had ongoing issues with following the building permit that also is now in compliance and they'll be moving forward and pouring the very limited area for the trash enclosure and moving forward with their building permit. And also myself and the finance director are in touch with um, a vacation rental compliance group and we'll be meeting with them to talk about services that they could possibly provide to the city the um, contract that we had combined with tax review services they weren't quite set up for that portion of it so we're branching out to a more specialized trying to reach out to more specialized groups so Good. those are the okay. updates so uh, just a question on the 401 Capitol Avenue uh, I see that they've uh, made smaller the area that they were going to uh, pour concrete in are they going to then cover the rest with flagstone or uh, some other alternative for a patio there no okay. the, the area that has been laid out to be poured will be poured the rest will be landscaping okay okay good thank you mm -hmm. you're welcome uh, that takes us to the uh, approval of the minutes and we have uh, Minutes of January 16, 2020, and minutes of February 6, 2020. Any comments, changes? Uh, we could do it in separate motions. I okay. abstain from item B. Okay. So does anyone want to make a motion on item A? I'll move that we uh, approve item A. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 That passes unanimously. <coughs> uh, anyone on item B? Uh, I'll move passage of uh, item B. Okay. We have second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And the uh, commissioner Welch will abstain. I also abstain. I wasn't. Oh, okay. We'll have two abstentions on that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, that takes us to our uh, consent calendar. We have two items on the consent calendar. One is just a continuance, but we'll do that. But we're going to take these separately. Uh, the first item is 50. Well, let me ask this. Uh, 
is there anyone either in the audience or uh, commissioners that want to have a hearing on either of the two items? One is a design permit for a uh, demolition of an existing one-story single-family residence and construction of a new two-story single-family residence at 1530 49th Avenue. And the other one is continuance of an application at 115 San Jose Avenue. Does anyone want those heard uh, at a public hearing? If not, we'll take them one at a time. Item A. I move approval. Second. Uh, roll call vote, please. Commissioner Welch? Aye. Commissioner Ruth? Aye. Commissioner Christensen? Aye. Commissioner Wilk? Aye. And Chair Newman? Abstain. Okay, thank you. And the next item is the continuance of uh, 115 San Jose Avenue. Do we have a motion to continue? I'll move approval to continue. A second. second. Okay, we got three seconds on that, so it's, <laughs> it's likely to pass. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, that takes us to our public hearings. We have three public hearings tonight. Let me get an idea from people in the audience. Uh, how many are here for the uh, 2163 Francisco Circle? One. How many are here for 1115 41st Avenue? Three. And how many are here for 201 Capitola Avenue? Three. Okay. So we'll take them in the order that they're uh, on the agenda. The first one is 2163 Francisco Circle. Application number 19-0661. It's a tree application for a tree removal permit to remove three healthy palm trees and plant six trees within the planned development zoning district. Staff report, please. Uh, good evening, commissioners and Chair Newman. The applicant is requesting uh, to remove three palm trees and plant six new trees on a single family lot located at 2163 Francesco Circle in the planned development zoning district. The, the property in the, is in the northeastern corner of Francesco Circle uh, neighborhood and borders a mobile home park to the north and the Capitol Library to the east. The proposed removals indicated in orange are three queen palms. An existing coast live oak and California palm would remain uh, with those removals, there would be a uh, combined 10.9% canopy coverage with the palm tree, the California palm, and the oak. Okay. The community tree and forest management ordinance allows for the removal of trees based on the following. Health or condition of this tree, safety considerations, the likelihood to interfere with utility services, where the tree has caused or has the potential to cause unreasonable property damage and as part of a development application or applications. The removals in this permit are considered as part of a development application. Although the home is not being remodeled, the property owner is proposing extensive work to the landscaping, including the removal of the existing hardscape within the rear yard, removal of three palm trees, and the establishment of six new trees, which are more complementary to the region, in addition to some smaller plantings and, and landscaping. Um, in speaking with Director Hurley, this is the first tree removal permit that has that is only associated with the landscape upgrade during her seven years with Capitola. Typically, these requests come in as a development application. Um, the community development director has the ability to approve tree removals associated with development applications. However, since the interpretation has not been applied before, the director thought it would be appropriate to request Planning Commission review. Should the Planning Commission approve the proposal, future applications could be reviewed and approved administratively under similar circumstances. Um, as part of new construction and major remodels, properties are required a post removal canopy coverage of 15%. The current proposal has a replacement ratio of two to one and will have a canopy coverage that will exceed 15% when the trees reach maturity. Uh, there's the list. Uh, the two, uh, there's three myrtles and a flowering plum, an Oklahoma redbud, and a desert museum palo verde. This slide lists the goals A through E of the community tree and forest management ordinance. In our analysis, which was covered in the report, staff determined that the project meets the intent of the goals and policies uh, in those uh, first A through E sections. 
with that, um, staff recommends the Planning Commission review and approve the tree removal permit based on the conditions of approval and findings. Okay, uh, so any questions of the staff at this point? So this question. Do you have a question? Commissioner. So do you have the uh, wording from the last time we had a tree uh, removal and we, we instead went with a canopy coverage? This was on... Uh, I, I did, one second. Uh, Clare Street, wasn't it? Right, it was on Clare Street. And uh, the concern there was we were overimposing the number of trees and that really That's what true. we wanted was, was can canopy coverage primarily. Yeah. So if you have that, I guess that was my question. If you have that hand. Yes, I do. Thank you. Would you Is like it read to you? Do you want anything further? Uh, if you, ha you could read it. Yeah, I'd be curious okay. to hear what it says. So the, the draft condition for more tree plant uh, planting flexibility. The landscape plan shall reflect the planning commission approval with an allowance to reduce the six tree planter requirement as long as the 15% minimum can canopy coverage is met and shall identify type, size, and location of species. Thank you. Any, any other questions of staff? If not, I'm going to open the public hearing. And let me just say, because uh, we've had a little problem with this in the past, because as chair, I'd maybe do this a little bit differently. But I'd like to open the public hearing, give the public a chance to say whatever they want to say, then close the public hearing, and the commissioners discuss it. That doesn't mean that the public can then, every time a commissioner gives a comment, say, oh, I have something to say about that, because we we would then have to reopen the public hearing and let everybody speak again. So say what you have to say at the beginning, please. Okay, so anyone? Seeing no, does the applicant, uh, applicant want to uh, speak at all? You don't have to. <laughs> I think Sean said it really well. <laughs> okay, all right, good. Okay, so we'll close the public hearing and we'll bring it back to the commission. And any thoughts? I have no concerns with this. Uh, my, I do have a concern, and that, and that is, um, I, I'm sure she's happy with the, the trees that she's planting, but I, I think we sh shouldn't we shouldn't require that she plant all of those trees. Uh, it, it might be the root, you know, we might have root problems, you might have overcrowding, and there might be all kinds of issues. So I, I think I, I would rather go with the wording that we had on the last uh, last tree issue on Clare Street, which was a 15% coverage requirement, which this would more than meet, but she could afford to remove a tree or two if she chose to in the process without having to come back for approval. So you're suggesting a more generous... Uh, Correct, a more generous condition. wording. Yeah. I, uh, I'm not a fan of our forest management plan never have been I, I think this two for one can be um, a little overwhelming this lot that the applicant has is extreme well it happens to be a little bit of a corner lot so it has a little bit of room but when I went and looked at it, I don't know where she's gonna put six trees when they become mature she's not gonna have room so I, I think we need some uh, areas to allow a little bit of concession for those areas and, and, and again if the goal is 15 percent let's do that but the two for one is a little overwhelming especially on some of these small lots so you would agree with Commissioner Wick's proposal yes. in that a regard. short answer yes well I'm, I'm just curious okay. how you how you measure 15 percent canopy coverage I mean they're gonna plant probably five gallon trees or maybe a 15 gallon tree so how do you determine the well, the it's canopy coverage when it's well, mature. Yeah. That. <laughs> that could be 20 years. So I, I can speak to that a little bit. Um, for trees that haven't been planted, we look at the species of, species of the tree and then um, look at arborist uh, reviews of mature canopy coverage or um, documents released by universities to see the best guess of 10, 20, 30 year assessments. Okay, so uh, uh, it's interesting how we have different uh, takes on this. <laughs> Situation. I'm I'm totally uh, in favor of what's happening here in terms of the merits of it, but uh, the theory is troubles me. Uh, basically, we're saying that the trees can be removed in conjunction with a development application, which is basically just the landscaping, uh, relandscaping, and changing the trees. So it's almost the bootstrap here. Uh, 
I, I think the intent of that was for a development application in the sense of a new building or an addition to a building. And um, we don't have an application for the landscape uh, permit because we don't need a mm -hmm. landscape permit. So uh, I'd be interested to hear what the other commissioners have to say about that. I certainly want to see this, uh, this take place, but I'm just not happy about the theory. I'm, I'm confused about your point. You're saying that would, this shouldn't even come before the Planning Commission because she could do whatever she wants with her landscaping? No, I don't, think it's, I don't think that the statute technically provides for this because it says you can uh, take out trees in conjunction with a development application. That's the basis for this. Okay. And this is not a development application except as, they're say, as the staff is saying, this is the first time in seven years that uh, the planning director has been here and all the time I've been here I've never seen uh, this uh, that a plant that a development application to support removal of the tree be the re-landscaping of the property how is, how is this any different than the tree removal request that we had on 49th Avenue the redwood tree a few well that went to council ago. didn't it yeah it went to council because we denied it but we still heard it yeah so how is this any different now, I don't know what they, the basis for their... Uh, so on that one, they were concerned about um, overwatering of that tree and the effect that the overwatering had on the branches and the branches therefore being unhealthy and the risk to the public. Um, this one is unique. It's, it's going to hopefully, you know, the, their, plan, their proposal to remove palms and have trees that are... Uh, local trees is in line with the goals. When we went through the criteria, we, we read through the, what, 20 page tree ordinance that we have very closely. And to make findings that these trees are sick cannot be done, and to make findings that they're impacting the building could not be done. But under this, there's one section that does allow with a development permit, and I, I do think that the um, ordinance is ready for an update, mm -hmm. although we can't get to it at this point because we're still um, in the midst of other updates. But I think this is an area that could be strengthened in the language of how we apply. Well, on the redwood tree removal on 49th, weren't they required to replace it with two trees? Yes, so the replacement was the same. The findings were findings under um, findings for removal for the health and safety of the tree. The issue is the basis for the removal under the ordinance and not. And, and, and just to be clear, I don't, the applicant's fine with the six trees, I'm fine with the six trees. The impetus behind that forest service, where the forest management plan that we have was uh, an individual cutting down a tree on it. It wasn't, ha it had nothing to do with development at the time, right? even though we tried to apply it to that. But so I, I, I understand the concern and why we have the policy. I, I like the percentage goal versus more trees I mean, so um, but if the applicants fine I'm fine allowing her to have six trees okay. I think the ordinance needs to be uh, revised to be more liberal because I'm totally in favor of uh, new trees that meet the um, recommended tree um, plan that we have here in place of some of the older trees that are have outlived their usefulness and I'd like to facilitate that happening in other places too and I think a more liberal ordinance would be the way to do it rather than uh, sort of uh, the theory that this is a, in conjunction with a development permit so there you are Does anyone care to try a motion I'm still a little confused at, about your your issue it's just it's just it's just that the fact that the ordinance needs to be cleaned up and that it doesn't really have to do with what do we do with this property? But we don't like the process associated with how we're handling it. That's right. We're basically modifying the ordinance uh, because it needs to, we, we want the result. We want the outcome. Right. So uh, I, I would move a rewording of the uh, requirement to uh, what staff had, had, had read earlier, i.e. the 15% coverage. So you want to, you can make a motion based I, on I that. I move I move that, and I'm not sure how eloquently to say that, but um, you can move approval with uh, on that basis. I, I, I move approval of the request uh, with, with the uh, on the basis mm -hmm. that we reword the uh, tree coverage to be 15 percent 
per your reading rather than uh, a two for one tree replacement. Well, I'm not quite there. I, I, I may do a second so I could ask the applicant a question. So maybe for the sake of getting this to a question period, I, okay. I'll, I'll uh, second that motion. Okay. And then I have a question for the applicant. Okay, go ahead. That, I'm sorry, you have to come up. But <laughs> so really, the, the the issue has nothing to do with your trees, <laughs> and your your issue it has to do with our ordinance. Uh, are you're fine with the six putting the six trees in? I guess. It, I'm to meet the requirement is. Yeah, no, it's a fantastic question, and um, I would like to abide by what's best for Capitola six did seem like a lot because i initially came in thinking the two for one deal i would do one local tree and then one fruit tree so we would have apples and plums in the backyard but um fruit trees are not allowed as the two for one although maybe with foliage that makes it easier because then i could get the foliage appropriate and then still have room for an apple tree for the apple pies the girls and i like to make but um it's a great question and i would hope that the um, arborists that I work with or the native plant garden accordingly and it, with the um, paperwork we had looked at to see how much space is needed it looks like we have enough space to do it but you're right I am ripping out a lot of concrete although I want to get rid of that anyways I want native plants I want to bring butterflies and bees in but um, it would be a burden on other families who maybe don't have as much space that also want to kind of beautify Capitola to what's in line with you know the point of having these ordinances so uh, I am okay with six. I'm still optimistic we have the space and it's going to work out, but in 20, 30 years, are they going to be overcrowding? It doesn't appear to be that way, but I did defer to the experts, and we had um, a lot of help from Sean and his team trying to work out which best, because I had a different list initially of plants or trees I was going to plant, and then we worked better together of, like, this might be a better fit and what would fit in our space. So, yeah, it's a good question. Well, I commend you for... Uh I think many people would just cut the trees down and do what they want to do, so I commend you <laughs> of actually coming in, so thank you. Yeah, of course. No, thank you for the hearing. Okay. I'll, I'll leave my motion, I mean my second. And okay, I just have a question, and I, is the only difference between this application and a application to remove a, an unhealthy tree is the fact that these are healthy trees? Is that the only difference? In the review criteria that's applied. So there's four criteria to an unhealthy tree. And for this, the criteria is that a 15% canopy coverage be provided. Okay. And if we remove an unhealthy tree, it's two for one, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep, two for one. So I, I just don't and see we why we would handle them differently. It's, it's in the review. The criteria that's being reviewed, typically, so for the um, project where the tree was appealed, there's specific criteria for unhealthy trees that have yeah. to be for those no, removal. I understand but this is that. tied to the development. You're, you're mixing but, two but, different issues. Well, let's say, let's say these palm trees were not healthy. They'd have to do the two for one, right? Same no, thing we're talking about no, right now. No, the, the other commissioners here are basically suggesting an alternative oh, to the two for one that would apply regardless of what the reason for removing the yeah. tree is, but you have to have a reason for removing the tree and that's the first issue. And the second issue is what is the replacement requirement? And they're suggesting that a, a less stringent replacement requirement would make sense. Okay? Yeah, I get that. So if somebody comes in and wants to remove an unhealthy tree, are we going to do a less stringent requirement on that uh, person? Probably. We'll evaluate it yeah. for the case it's by pending. case. Pending. Yeah. In this case, it's a very tiny lot. I mean, if we were talking about a four acre lot, then maybe we would have, yeah. uh, you know, a different, a different attitude. But most of the lots are pretty tiny. And but most yeah. lots are pretty tiny, so it's likely to come up again. All right. Okay, anything further? I'm going to uh, call for a roll call vote. Commissioner Welch? Aye. Commissioner Ruth? Aye. Commissioner Christensen? Aye. Commissioner Wilk? Aye. And Chair Newman? I am reluctantly a no here, although okay. I favor this project. I don't think we have the grounds for it. <laughs> okay, you passed. <laughs> Plant your apple tree. Okay, so there are two more items on the agenda and I'm gonna be turning the uh, panel over to uh, the vice chair, Janet. I think I'm supposed to explain why. The first item 
115 41st Avenue. Uh, I have a commercial relationship with the applicant that this qualifies me from hearing that item. And the second item at 201 Capitola Avenue, I have property within the um, required or the proximity requirement. So that disqualifies me from that. And that will take us to the end of the agenda. So I will see you next month. <laughs> okay. Enjoy your evening, Great Mr. Night. Newman. Okay, that brings us to public hearing item B, 1115 41st <laughs> Avenue, application 190534. And this is a, for an amendment to a master sign program for O'Neill Surf Shop located within the CC zoning district. The presentation, please. Thank you. The applicant is requesting an amendment to the master sign program for an existing business located at 1115 41st Avenue in the Community Commercial Zoning District. The, um, the existing O'Neill Surf Shop is a two-story commercial building along 41st Avenue across from In Shape Health Clubs and Broody Liquors. The site is located within Capitola's 41st Avenue commercial corridor and on the border of the city limit adjacent to residential uses within the unincorporated area of Santa Cruz County. Uh, this is the site plan. Existing wall signs are located on the beveled corners along 41st Avenue. Sign A faces 41st Avenue and Melton Street. Sign B faces 41st Avenue as well um, and the railroad. Uh, this is the existing and proposed sign for the northeast corner. This is the existing and proposed signs for the southeast corner. As you can see, the proposed signage uh, has reduced the size of the logo and increased the size of the text. Both signs in existing and proposed are identical to each other on either corner. The original master sign program was extremely limited. It referenced the possibility of code enforcement and the necessity of a business license. The only standards in the original permit were related to large and small letter height and logo height. The proposed signs did not comply with the maximum lettering heights. Uh, to accommodate periodic changes to letter and logo height, staff suggested the applicant uh, modify their master sign program to allow more flexibility. This would allow future permits to be issued over the counter, provided that they meet the standards. The amended master sign program includes maintaining existing sign locations, maximum sign area, maximum sign height and width, maximum combined letter height, and may be internally or externally illuminated, with lettering style and co sign color subject to community development director approval. The proposed signs comply with the amended master sign program as shown on the slide. With that, staff recommends the Planning Commission review and approve the master sign program amendment based on the conditions of approval and findings. Okay. Any questions for staff? None? Okay, then we'll open the public hearing to anyone who wishes to speak on this item. If you could sign your name and identify yourself, please. Uh, good evening, um, Honorable Vice uh, Commissioner, Vice Chair, and Commissioners, um, staff. I'm Mark Massara, and I uh, represent uh, O'Neill. And I'm here with my colleagues um, to thank you for your consideration and also to thank your staff for working with us on this application. Uh, we're in agreement with your staff on all the proposed conditions and findings uh, and are simply here for any questions that you might have. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, anyone else wishing to speak? Okay, we'll bring it back to the commission. Any comments? No comments. No comment, I'll move and make a motion to approve as a second. I have a motion and a second. Will the roll call please, Chloe? Of course. Commissioner Welch? Aye. Commissioner Christensen? Aye. Commissioner Wilk? Aye. And Vice Chair Ruth? Aye. Motion Thank carries. You. Okay, that brings us to item C. 201 Capitola Avenue. This is a design permit and conditional use permit for modifications to an historic structure, introducing new windows and doors along the San Jose Avenue facade and converting a second story office to a residential unit located within the CV zoning district. Excuse me, Vice Chair, I believe I have to recuse myself due to proximity. Okay. Great. Thank you. See you next month. 
<laughs> We're dropping fast. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Vice Chair Ruth. <clears throat> As you mentioned, the applicant is proposing an interior remodel of a 4,958 square foot historic structure that includes a new recessed entryway along San Jose Avenue and the conversion of an existing second story commercial space into a new residential unit in the Central Village Zoning District. The existing commercial structure at 201 Capitol Avenue, uh, as mentioned, is historic. Uh, it's on the southwest corner of Capitol Avenue and San Jose Avenue. The 5,140 square foot lot is adjacent to the Capitola Mercantile to the south and Capitola Candy Company to the west. The structure currently contains two suites previously occupied by the Village Mouse and a Thomas Kincaid gallery. Capitola Avenue is made up of mainly one and two story uh, structures with retail uses on the first story. So here's the site plan. Here's our first story existing floor plan. Uh, the gallery that's not included really in the project is on the lower left-hand corner there. Uh, and then the village mouse space stretched all the way from the bottom right up to the storage area on the left. Uh, there's a mezzanine with a staircase that you see at the bottom that will be, the staircase will be removed and the mezzanine will be modified. And then this is the existing second story floor plan, which is above that middle section of the village mouse space. So here's our first story uh, proposed floor plan. Applicant is proposing an interior model remodel that will create one additional commercial tenant suite for a total of three uh, and one new residential unit on the second story. All proposed changes are within the commercial space previously occupied by the Village Mouse, uh, except for that small bit in the bottom right corner of the Thomas Kincaid gallery space. Um, the second story, uh, Planset indicates that there is an existing residential unit on the second floor inside the commercial space at 2 on Capitol Avenue uh, that can be only accessed by the stairway and mezzanine inside the commercial suite, um, which looked a little suspicious. Um, so when we, uh, we did a little review of the building permit history um, and the occupancy codes, and basically uh, there's no proof that it had ever been a legal residential component there, uh, which is why they are proposing a new residential unit as part of this project. There is, however, an existing doorway uh, at the front that they'll be utilizing to access the staircase here along San Jose Avenue. Uh, residential uses on the first and second floor are principally permitted in the Central Village Zoning District. The residential unit would also be converted from existing commercial floor area and no additional floor area is proposed. Uh, actually, by replacing the mezzanine with a smaller hallway, the project actually reduces the floor area of the structure by 162 square feet. Uh, the build building currently has no on-site parking. Uh, the previous retail use was eligible for beach and village parking lot permits, uh, which are only valid in the lots behind City Hall. Uh, however, under the village parking permit program, the new residential space would be allowed either one transferable hang tag uh, for a part-time resident or vacation rental, uh, or up to two stickers for full-time residents. Therefore, the proposed residential unit would increase demand on village parking spaces. So here's our existing elevations. Uh, there's no proposed uh, changes to the north, south, or west elevations, so we'll focus on the east. The proposed architectural modifications uh, face San Jose Avenue and include a recessed entryway with doors to the new suites, a new display window with an awning, a new single pane window replacing the existing three pane second story window and uh, a new awning over the existing door that will become the entrance to the second story apartment. The proposed design will maintain the sharply arched fluted square streamlined columns of the historic structure. <clears throat> because the proposed structure, uh, proposed project includes significant alterations to a historic structure, a conditional use permit is required um, in order to qualify for a CEQA exemption. So uh, architectural historian Leslie Dill reviewed the project for compatibility with the Secretary of the Interior Standards uh, and with the incorporation of several clarifications and other minor recommendations noted in her report, which were subsequently included, um, the proposed rehabilitation project could be found to meet the Secretary of the Interior Standards. The current application does not include a request for new signage, but while doing the research for this project, we discovered that a master sign program does exist for the property. Uh, it is still active, so staff thought it'd be as, it would be important to in, uh, include a review of that master sign program in case future tenants wish to utilize it uh, in order to install new awning or window signs. So the master sign program consists of 
uh, an awning sign. So number one, the one, things indicated as number one here are uh, awning signs over both windows on Capitola Avenue frontage. Uh, one with the T. Kincaid identification and the other with the Village Mouse identification and window signs for both those windows. Uh, the number two is uh, an awning sign with Village Mouse identification over the window on the corner of the building at San Jose Avenue and a window directional sign for Thomas Kincaid. And number three, an awning sign with Thomas Kincaid identification over the entrance to the suite adjacent to San Jose Avenue. <laughs> The approval specified that awning signage would be li limited to five inch white lettering and that the total sign area would be limited to 5.5 square feet uh, and that the awnings shall be maintained and replaced when deterioration has occurred to the extent that the aesthetics of the awnings are not in keeping with the village character. Uh, so based on that last part and due to the uh, deteriorated nature of the existing awnings with the previous awning signs painted over but still visible through the paint as shown here, uh, staff has included condition number 26, which requires the awnings to be replaced prior to a planning final. So with that, staff recommends the Planning Commission review and approve Project 190375 based on the conditions of approval and findings. Any questions for staff? Oh. On the awnings, uh, the Kincaid Gallery awning is different from the other ones, but in that one picture, I think when it was about the master sign program they were all the same mm -hmm. is there a requirement or consideration or has there been to make them all the same i didn't see anything about that okay um, i'm assuming you could add that condition to this project if you like okay okay no questions then it's a public hearing and we'll open it up is there anyone wishing to speak Good evening, honorable members of the Planning Commission. Uh, I'm Dennis Norton. I represent WRR Properties and the administrator of those properties. Uh, Rick Gavilla is also here for the answer questions. Um, this has been a vacant store for a year and a half, and it, it is a prime location in the village. It's been fairly damaged in the village to leave a vacancy like this so long. And what the conclusions we came to is, is there was a, there's a lot of demand out there to put a restaurant in here. We can't make the requirements. The, the parking requirements hold us from doing any kind of use besides retail there. Now, the exception that would be is if it was a small five-seat wine bar like it was just put in down the street. So we came to the conclusion that the way to uh, get this building rented is to actually split the building in half. And so what you're seeing here, that's why we had to add the side entrance to this. And um, that creates a secondary unit to the, to the back part and then the front, front part of the, of the property. So more than likely, it's going to go to two different types of retail in there. The, the building in the back is the art gallery that will stay as it is, although it's considered that the whole building is historic. In other words, the, the, even the gallery in the back, because it's a connected building, was considered in, in the review of, of this property. Um, we agree with all the conditions of approval. Um, we're really anxious to get some a tenant in that building, and I'm sure the neighbors are too. We're not changing the footprint at all. The upstairs, the upstairs uh, res, r r r unit has actually been there for many years. The difference was is you had to walk through um, the old village mouse to get to it, and it's probably used as their office. But there's a kitchen and, and, a, and a bathroom. We're up there. So we're not creating new space anywhere in the building. This we do is we create a separate entrance so there could be a small rental apartment upstairs in, in that building. Um, we're not changing the footprint of the building. There is actually an open space in the back of the building that may be used, for instance, if the back unit is taken by a yoga studio, it could be used as that kind of use for an outside area. So um, uh, it's, it's, uh, uh, it's, it's historic, uh, I think, in our minds. Architecturally, it's questionable, but we're not changing anything on the outside, with the exception of indenting that one area where we have display, uh, two display windows, um, and uh, we appreciate your approval on this project. Any questions? I'm happy to answer. Questions for Dennis? Yeah, Dennis, on, on that awning over the Kincaid Gallery, do you intend to replace that along with the other ones as the same or still the same style so they have a, their own identity? We could, well, it's a, um, um, we can go either way on the thing, but that what we'd like to do is the one awning that's over the new door there, the left, we would like to match that to the rest of the building because it's in the same di uh, business format. 
we weren't planning on, on removing that that awning, but if it's a wish of the planning commission, we can make that work. Yeah, I think I'll leave that up to the rest of the commission. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing, uh, the windows on the on the east elevation, mm -hmm. just on the scale of your drawing, they appear to be closer to the sidewalk, the bottom of the windows, than the other existing windows. Is that true, or is it just the uh, the I, one to the left, Mick, is, is right at the sidewalk line. That's in the existing wall. But what happens, the one to, excuse me, the one to the left, the one to the right, where it has a transom window above it, yeah. the transom window is already there. It's above. What we're doing, we're pushing back so you can put an entry door to the left and the right there. So that window, yes, is set back from the others. But I mean, the, the distance from the sidewalk to the bottom of the window. They're, they're six feet in height. And from an eight foot header, they'll be two feet off the ground. Okay, is that the same as the other existing windows? Yes, if you look, okay. at, the, look at the front ones over here. Okay, it just looks different on your drawing. Yeah, I, I think they're meant to be the same. They're the same height and elevation all the way across the top. Okay, okay. okay. And about the apartment, uh, if Dennis probably remembers, uh, Joanne McGowan lived up there for decades. Hmm. I'm surprised it's not grandfathered in, because that started back, and Karen could probably verify, back in the 60s, right? <laughs> so, yeah. But so it's gutted, but it, there, there yeah. was, for years, an apartment up there, and, and we're just putting it back to what it was and making, all, making it all to code today. That's what our intention is. We're going to add two ADU, ADA bathrooms downstairs, so it'll service the uh, the two, the two, all three of the downstairs tenants. So we're, we're adding facilities that are bringing this building up to, to its code today. Well, it's been vacant for a long time. If this helps to get it rented, that'd be great. I think it will. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Dennis. Anyone else wishing to speak on this item? Okay, seeing no one, we'll close the public portion, bring it back to the commission for discussion. Any comments? No, I'm I'm uh, happy to see that getting some work done so we can get this thing rented. I I actually I like the architectural design of it, Dennis. Uh, I know you said it doesn't have a lot, but it's uh, maybe it goes back from the days in past remembering. But um, yeah, I'm in favor of it and would uh, make a motion to move forward with the project as staff recommend recommended. Okay, comment I second. I second. Okay, we have a motion and a second then. Uh, roll call, please. Commissioner Welch. Aye. Commissioner Christensen. Aye. Vice Chair Ruth. Aye. Thank motion you. carries. Thank you. Good luck. Good, maybe we'll get that hole in the village filled now. <laughs> okay, that brings us to uh, director's report. No director's report. No report. Any communications from commissioners? None? No. Okay, meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.